Hello everyone, my name is The Forest Nook and welcome to Gundam Garage, a series where we take a peek under the hood of your favorite Gundam from Gundam Evolution. In today's episode, we're going to be covering the dreaded treads that spit out lead, Gun Tank. This tank-like mobile suit was the first mobile suit successfully developed by the Earth Federation forces as part of Operation B. Despite the disparity between Federation and Xeon Tech, Gun Tank has incredible sustained damage and the core fighter stored inside its body packs a punch. As a quick note before we get into specifics, it's important to know that I will be referring to a measuring system that I have termed units throughout the video. When I refer to units, I am talking about the numbers provided in the practice range that can be seen on screen now. The practice range marks every 100 units, both on the wall and on the ground. Taking an overall look at our featured Gundam today, Gun Tank is a 1 star difficulty, 1200 health, mid range fighter that has 2 dashes. Compared to other Gundams, Gun Tank is one of the easier Gundams to play according to the official ranking system, but when played correctly, can dominate a lobby. Now, let's get into what makes Gun Tank special. Starting off with the rapid fire auto targeting BOP missile, which has infinite ammo but is prone to overheating. Upon clicking the left mouse button, the BOP missile will automatically target multiple enemies within range. This attack will deal anywhere from 9 to 18 hit scan damage up to 300 units away, with damage fall off starting at approximately 250 units away. It's important to remember that only three targets can be targeted at a time in this firing mode, optimally dealing a maximum of 2600 damage across three Gundams before overheating. Speaking of firing modes, the BOP missile has an additional firing mode. Upon clicking the right mouse button, Gun Tank will focus all fire onto a single target, increasing the target acquisition range to 450 units and increasing hit scan damage up to 10 to 21 with minor damage fall off starting at 100 units and major damage fall off starting at 300 units. The downsides of this mode are that your movement speed is reduced in this mode, the most damage that can be done is about 1,500 to a single target before overheating, and the targeting area is greatly reduced. Before moving on, there are two crucial points to keep in mind when using the BOP missile. Number one, for a Gundam to be targeted, the enemy must be within the targeting UI which is highlighted on your screen now. Take note of the size difference between the multi-target mode and the single target mode. Number two. As mentioned previously, the BOP missile can overheat after continuously shooting for 6.5 seconds. Overheating is indicated by the vertical rectangles on both the left and right hand sides of the UI. If the BOP missile does overheat, it will take 5 seconds for the weapon to be operational once again. However, the BOP missiles can reduce overheating buildup by stopping fire and there will be no overheating in 2.75 seconds or less depending on the buildup. To reduce the chances of overheating, periodically stop firing to allow sustained damage over a longer period of time. While it is up to you to decide what firing mode to use, I suggest using multi-mode when multiple enemies are in close to mid-range, and focus mode when you are engaging a single enemy, an enemy is at long range, or if an enemy is low in order to secure a kill. Moving on to abilities, Gun Tank has three unique abilities. Cannon, Rush, and High Speed Recovery. Let's take a look at Cannon first, why don't we? Upon clicking the F button on your keyboard, Gun Tank's overhead barrels move forward and launch a slow moving mid range projectile that damages all units in a medium range. Cooldown for this ability is 10 seconds and the damage dealt varies. How does it vary you may be asking? Well. If you directly hit an enemy Gundam at point blank range as depicted on screen, you'll deal approximately 500 damage to your enemy. But you also deal approximately 150 damage to yourself as well. You can play it a little safer by shooting from a range and if you get a direct hit, you will deal 360 damage. Now, if you miss the direct hit, don't worry, splash damage has got your back. For my testing, it seems that splash damage is applied to an enemy within 40 units in any direction from the center of the explosion. This damage can range anywhere from 100 to 300 damage. Do keep in mind that this projectile arcs. 
so make sure to aim a little higher than normal if going for a target further than 300 units away. My personal recommendation for this ability is to use it throughout a fight to chunk an enemy's health down or to finalize a kill. Next, let's talk about Rush. Upon pressing the E button on your keyboard, Gun Tank begins a 3 second, 200 unit charge forward that deflects attacks from the front as long as the Rush is active. Not only is Rush useful for getting out of tough situations, but it can be used in an offensive manner as well. But do be wary that your dashes cannot be used during this time. If an enemy is hit by Rush, they take 100 damage and are knocked back a short distance. Your turn sensitivity stays the same during this ability, so it is possible to 180 out of a situation or become a Drift King that lands multiple hits on an enemy. If you want to end the charge early, click the left mouse button while in rush to perform a body slam. If the body slam is performed with the enemy directly in front of you, you will deal 150 damage to the enemy and the enemy will receive knockback. A little known fact about rush is that you can combo the damage from a direct hit on an enemy into the damage from a body slam, dealing a total of 250 damage. This is a perfect move to finish off an enemy and can be done by clicking the left mouse button as soon as you make contact with the enemy during your rush. This is made possible due to the knockback from the direct hit. Moving on to what I would consider a passive for the gun tank, we have high speed recovery. With this passive, gun tank can revive a teammate in one second, which is two seconds faster than the normal revive. Upon getting a successful revive, this passive will be on cooldown for 12 seconds. Keep this in mind if you're going to revive two allies. You may find yourself being downed if you forget. Finally, it's time to let that inner beast out by letting our core fighter take flight. This G maneuver allows you to launch a fast moving core fighter that is stored with inside your gun tank. As this is a G maneuver, it can take up to 8 minutes for this ability to be activatable, but can be shortened by dealing damage. In my testing, I found that dealing roughly 7000 damage fully charges the G maneuver. Digging into the specifics, this core fighter is constantly moving forward, can be directed using your mouse, and can ascend and descend by pressing the spacebar and S key respectively. The core fighter has a total of 400 health and can fly around for 11 seconds before detonating in an explosion. If the 11 seconds is too long for you, you can prematurely detonate the explosion by clicking the left mouse button. In either of these cases, the explosion can deal 1500 damage at the center of the explosion, which is capable of killing any Gundam that does not currently have armor. While this damage is impressive, the damage greatly falls off the further an enemy is away from the center of the explosion, with the explosion extending out 100 units in any direction. Do note that the core fighter can take damage, and if destroyed by an enemy, there will be no damaging explosion. My personal recommendation when using this G maneuver is to retreat a small distance before activating so that once you return from using your core fighter, you won't be caught in the middle of a gunfight. In addition, search for a group of enemies to ensure you get the most bang for your buck. Just make sure to keep an eye on how much time you have until detonation.